Morning all. All right, so after a relatively quiet night last night in the National Hockey League, it gets really noisy tonight. This is the busiest weeknight I'm going to be dealing with until October. Uh, there are 13 games tonight. I think there's 10 on Thursday, and then next week it's not too bad. But uh, yeah, 13 tonight, including 7, starting at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 Eastern, so busy right away. And there isn't really a game that features two teams that are outside of the playoff hunt. Uh, there are two games starting an hour after that, so that brings it up to nine that are going on at the same time. By the time the 10th game gets started, at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 p.m. Pacific, at least one of these games will either be done or completely decided. So, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Uh, so, starting at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, we have the Carolina Hurricanes and the Boston Bruins. First game that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at here, and it might end up being game of the night material. Uh, they've split the first two meetings. This could potentially be a conference final matchup. Uh, for Carolina, they won January 24th, 3-2. April 4th, Boston won 4-1. Carolina's 49-22-7. They're five points back of the New York Rangers. So they have to win this and become Islander fans tonight. Last 10 games, they're 7-2-1. Sebastian Ajo leading him in scoring over the last month. 16 games, 11 goals, 11 assists, 22 points. Jake Gensel, 14 games, 5 goals, 16 assists, 21 points. Y yeah, yeah, it, it feels like Gensel's really fit in quite well there. On the Boston side, they're 46, 17, and 15. They're 5 points ahead of Florida. So, uh, Boston fans, you're also cheering for Ottawa tonight. And then if, if Boston wins, that basically wraps up the division. Uh, Boston 7-3 and three in their last 10. Pasternak, their leading scorer over the last month. 13 games, 8 goals, 8 assists, 16 points. Pavel Zaka has been playing really well. 13 games, 4 goals, 12 assists, 16 points over the last month himself. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific start between Washington and Detroit. And this is a, a big matchup. And of course, Penguin fans are going to be watching this one. Uh, Sabres and, and Devils fans probably feel like they're, they're done at this point. But at any rate... Uh, one of these two teams is going to get a point, or if you're Pittsburgh, you're really hoping they don't both get a point. So Detroit won the first meeting February 27th by a score of 8-3. to March 26th, it was a 4-3 to overtime win for Washington, meaning if the game's close, Washington's got a shot. If it's a blowout, uh, they're probably done. Uh, Washington's 36-30-11 on the season. They're one point back of Detroit for that final playoff spot. Uh, and also one point back of Pittsburgh, of course. Uh, they're three, five, and two in their last ten. They've lost six in a row. Ovechkin, their leading scorer over the, leading scorer over the last month, sixteen games, eleven goals, four assists, fifteen points. Uh, Marash Nachenko not getting a lot of goals, but he's playing well. Sixteen games, one goal, four assists, five points. On the Detroit side, again, they're tied with Pittsburgh in points. This is the game in hand, however. Thirty-eight, thirty-one, and eight is their record. Detroit is 4-4-2 four, four, over their last 10 games. Raymond, 14 games, 9 goals, 3 assists, 12 points. Has been their leading scorer over the last month. Valeno, just the one assist in 14 games. He's due for a goal or something. He was in a fight the last game, so maybe he'll get a goal or an assist in this. Uh, Ottawa and Florida. Uh, Florida's won the first three meetings, so Ottawa's trying to avoid the sweep tonight. Good luck on that one. November 27th, Florida won this matchup 5-0. February 20th, it was a 3-2 overtime win for Florida. And April the 4th, a 6-0 win for Florida. Ottawa's 34-39-4 overall. They're 6-4 in their last 10. Brady Kachuk, their leading scorer over the last month. 16 games, 7 goals, 10 assists, 17 points. Shane Pinto, about a point every other game. 16 games, 2 goals, 6 assists, 8 points again over the last month. Uh, for the Florida Panthers, they're three points ahead of Toronto. So they need to win this one, and they'll be cheering for New Jersey tonight. 48-24-6 uh, is the record for Florida. They're 3-5-2 and two in their last 10. Reinhardt, the leading scorer over the last month, 14 games, 8 goals, 7 assists, 15 points. Lou Sterinen, that might be due for a goal. 14 games, 1 goal, 6 assists, 7 points for him. Also at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, the Flyers and the Montreal Canadiens, who have split the first two meetings. They get to know one another again. January 10th, it was a 3-2 shootout victory for the Flyers. March 28th, a 4-1 win for Montreal. Philadelphia has found a way to make sure they don't make the playoffs, and they're still trying. 36-31-11. Uh, and, and all kidding aside, I hope the Flyers figure this out. Uh, it is sad to watch a team fade this badly. They're one point back at Detroit. They're tied again. They've got almost the same record as Washington. They're 2-5-3 and three in their last 10. It's not been going very well. Tippett, their leading scorer over the last month, 14 games, 6 goals, 7 assists, 13 points. Farabee, 
14 games, three goals, one assist, four points, but and uh, just woeful minus 12 over the last month. Montreal 29, 36, and 12 overall, four, five, and one over their last 10. Slavkovsky, uh, 14 games, three goals, 11 assists, 14 points, has been their leading scorer over the last month. Newhook, 14 games, four goals, six assists, 10 points for Alex Newhook. And I think Newhooks pr fit in pretty darn well with the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, so we'll see how that one goes. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific start between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the New Jersey Devils. The Devils won the first meeting March 26th by a score of 6-3. to three. These teams will meet again on April the 11th. So for Toronto, they're 45-23-9 overall. They're 6 points clear of Tampa Bay, who they will play, I believe, on, on Thursday. 7-3 uh, and three record for the Maple Leafs over their last 10. They're coming off of a win last night against Pittsburgh. Uh, Matthews, 14 games, 11 goals, 11 assists, 22 points, has been their leading scorer. And, of course, he's trying to get to that 70-goal mark. Uh, McMahon, 14 games, 6 goals, 1 assist, 7 points. He's been solid for them since the call-up. On the New Jersey side, they're 5 points back at Detroit for that final playoff spot. They're 37-36-5 and five overall. They're 5-4-1 and one over their last 10. Nico Heischer, their leading scorer over the last month, 15 games, 6 goals, 10 assists, 16 points. Uh, Holtz, 13 games, or 15 games, I should say, 3 goals, 1 assist, 4 points for Holtz over the last month. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific start between the New York Rangers and the New York Islanders. The Rangers have won the first two meetings. They will meet again on April the 13th. But the first two meetings went thusly. February 18th, a 6-5 to five overtime win for the Rangers. March 17th, a 5-2 to two win for the Rangers. Uh, the Rangers are 3 points clear of Boston for first overall and first in the East. Uh, Dallas is also tied in points with Boston. Uh, eight and two over the last 10 games for the New York Rangers, who are 53, 21, and four overall. Panarin, their leading scorer over the last month, 16 games, 11 goals, 19 assists, 30 points. Kako. So I've talked a lot about Lafreniere and how his scoring's picked up. You know what? So's Kako's over the last month, 16 games, six goals, two assists, eight points. Six goals in 16 games is very respectable. On the Islanders' side of things, they're 35, 27, and 15. They're only one point clear of Pittsburgh. So nothing's really settled in terms of third spot in the Metro and that wild card position either. Uh, Barzell is the leading scorer for the New York Islanders over the last month. 15 games, 3 goals, 10 assists, 13 points. The Islanders are 6 and 4 in their last 10. Uh, Pollock, 15 games, 1 goal, 4 assists, 5 points. Solid production from Pollock as usual. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific start between Columbus and the Tampa Bay Lightning. These teams have split the first two meetings. November 2nd, it was a 4-2 win for Columbus. February 10th, a 4-2 win for Tampa Bay. Columbus is 26-40-12 overall. They're 3-6-1 over their last 10. Wierenski, 15 games, 5 goals, 9 assists, 14 points over the last month. Uh, Malatesta, just the one assist in 7 games since being called up, but he's been prominent. He's about due for a goal. On the Tampa Bay side... <clears throat> they are nine points clear of Detroit, so Tampa Bay's pretty firmly set where they are as the number one wild card. So, probably a Boston Tampa Bay first round match. Uh, 43 27 and 7 is the record for Tampa Bay. They're 7 2 and 1 in their last 10. Kucherov over the last month, 13 games, 5 goals, 25 assists, 30 points. Uh, Braden Point, 12 games, 11 goals, 9 assists, 20 points, 4 point. Uh, which which is why when people talk about Kucherov and how many points he has, ah, he's so far ahead of everybody else. But since majority of that majority of what Kucherov produces are assists, I think you have to give some credit to the goal scorers as well. I, I think that's part of it. Uh, eight Eastern, five Pacific start between Buffalo and Dallas. Uh, Dallas won the first meeting February sixth by a score of two to one. Uh, for Buffalo, they're five points back of a playoff spot. They're thirty seven, thirty six, and five. Same record as New Jersey, 5-5 five and five over their last 10. Almost the same record over their last 10 as New Jersey. Uh, Tage Thompson's had a really strong run lately. 14 games, 11 goals, 9 assists, 20 points to lead them in scoring over the last month. Uh, Bowen Byram, scoring slowed down a little bit, but he's no less prominent. 14 games, 2 goals, 2 assists, 4 points for Byram. On the Dallas side, they're 5 points clear of Colorado after beating them the other night. And so now they get Buffalo. I'm wearing Dallas because I'm like, I, I mean... They, they should win this. They're 49-20-9 overall. They're 9-1 and one in their last 10 games. Uh, Jamie Venn leading them in scoring over the last month. 13 games, 10 goals, 7 assists, 17 points. Harley had a really good game last night out, and we'll see whether or not 
Uh, he gets a goal here. He has 13 games, one goal, eight assists, nine points over the last month. And by last night out, I mean the last game they played, which was a couple days ago. Uh, eight Eastern, five Pacific start between the Jets and the Nashville Predators. So there's a lot of fun games on this board. Uh, this being one of them. Nashville's won two of the first three. Winnipeg's trying to tie the series. Uh, Nashville's trying to win it. So November 9th, Winnipeg wins 6-3. to three. November 26th, is a 3-2 to two win for Nashville. And March the 13th, a 4-2 to two win for the Nashville Predators. Winnipeg, two points back at Colorado. So if you're a Jets fan, you're cheering for Minnesota tonight, and you're also rooting for a win. Winnipeg's 47-24-6 overall. They're 4-5-1 over their last 10. Nick Ehlers leading him in scoring over the last month. 15 games, 4 goals, 8 assists, 12 points. DeMello has had a remarkable run this year. 15 games, 1 goal, 9 assists, 10 points. On the Nashville side, they're 45-29-4. They're 7 points clear of St. Louis. I'm pretty sure if they win this one tonight, they clinch themselves a playoff spot. Uh, they're 6-4 and four in their last 10. Forsberg, 14 games, 10 goals, 12 assists, 22 points. Their leading scorer over the last month. Uh, Zucker, 14 games, 4 goals, 2 assists, 6 points for Zucker, who's fitting in pretty well in Nashville. Uh, 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific, the Minnesota Wild and the Colorado Avalanche renew their rivalry. The first three games, all won by Colorado. November 24th, 3-2. March the 8th, 2-1 in overtime. And April the 4th, 5-2. For Minnesota, they're 37-31-9. They're 4-4-2 in their last 10. Uh, Kaprizov, their leading scorer over the last month, 13 games, 11 goals, 10 assists, 21 points. Uh, Johansson, just the one goal in 12 games. I'm kind of surprised at the lack of production from Johansson this year. I, I feel like a lot of it's bad luck. On the Colorado side, again, they're five points back at Dallas. They have a record of 48-24-6. They're 5-4-1 over their last 10. So they've had some struggles recently, but, I mean, they're Colorado. They'll pull out of that. Uh, McKinnon, their leading score over the last month, 13 games, 8 goals, 14 assists, 22 points. McCarr, 13 games, 2 goals, 12 assists, 14 points. Again, the whole defense, you know, is McCarr going to win it? Is Hughes going to win it? And all this fighting back and forth. I, I personally would find it amusing if then Yossi just wins it, because why not? But anyways, uh, we'll see how that all turns out. And then at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, we have two games starting then, and then we have a 7.30 start as well. So we'll start with the 7 starts, of course. Uh, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific start between the LA Kings and the Anaheim Ducks. LA's won the first two meetings. These teams will meet a fourth and final time on April the 13th. On November 24th, it was a 5-2 win for the Kings. And on February 24th, a 3-2 shootout victory for the Kings. LA is 41, 25, and 11. They're six points back at Edmonton uh, in that race for second in the division. They're seven and three over their last 10. And the Canucks did them a favor last night by beating Vegas. Uh, over the last month, Kempe, remarkable. 13 games, eight goals, 14 assists, 20 points for the Kings. Uh, Dubois honestly been good for them lately, even though the puck's not going in the net off his stick. He's passing it to guys who do bury the puck. 15 games, one goal, 10 assists, 11 points for Dubois over the last month. On the Anaheim side, they're 25, 48, and 5 overall. They're 2, 6, and 2 over their last 10. Uh, Kalorn, 15 games, 6 goals, 3 assists, 9 points. Their leading scorer over the last month. And Leo Carlson, definitely seeing improvement recently. 11 games, 3 goals, 2 assists, 5 points for Carlson. 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific start between Arizona and Seattle. Uh, Arizona's won the first two meetings, but they were both close. In a shootout, 4-3 to three on November 7th. In overtime, 2-1 to one on March 22nd. The Coyotes are 20 or 33, 39, and 5 overall. They are 6-4 and four over their last 10, though. They're, they're playing well down the stretch. Uh, Keller, 13 games, 10 goals, 10 assists, 20 points. He's their leading scorer over the last month. Guy's a star. Uh, Kerfoot had a goal in their last game. It was his first in a while. Maybe he's going to have a bit of a goal-scoring binge by the end of the season. 13 games, 1 goal, 6 assists, 7 points for Kerfoot over the last month. Uh, Seattle's 32, 31, and 13. They're 4, 5, and 1 over their last 10. Uh, Bjorkstrand, 13 games, 4 goals, 6 assists, 10 points, is their leading scorer over the last month. And Shane Wright, since being called up, has looked really good. 3 games, 3 goals, 1 assist, 4 points. And then at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, we have the Flames, we have the Sharks. Uh, San Jose won the first meeting February 15th by a score of 6-3. These teams will meet again on April the 18th, the last night of the season. Calgary, 34-37-5 and five overall. They're 2-8 and eight over their last 10 games. Uyghur, the leading scorer over the last month. Uh, 14 games, 4 goals, 8 assists, 12 points for Uyghur. Uh, Blake Coleman, <clears throat> the, the downturn for the Flames seemed to be directly correlated with Coleman's scoring dropping off. 
Uh, but still, Coleman's had a really good year. 14 games, 3 goals, 1 assist, 4 points for Coleman over the last month. Uh, San Jose, 18, 51, and 8 overall. They're 2, 7, and 1 over their last 10. Uh, Granlund, 15 games, 3 goals, 13 assists, 16 points for him to lead them in scoring over the last month. Uh, Justin Bailey, just the two assists in 15 games, but prominent in their last game. Maybe he'll get one tonight. Um, San Jose, of course, probably striving to at least win 20 games before the season's done. We'll see if they can get there. Let me know your picks in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Uh, so, yeah, this is one of the last times I'll be using this board. I use it on Thursday for the Saturday, and then you don't see it again until October, and it's going to be different come October. So thank you guys so much for all your support, as always. I will talk to you again soon.